we sent this good news around to all of our churches around the world today towards Shiloh 2019. We should all be well informed of what to expect at Shiloh 2019. We should all know what kind of table God has set before us. Psalm 23 verse 5 he prepared a table before me. We must come to know what God has prepared on the table for us at Shiloh 2019. In Isaiah 25, verse 6 to 9, he said, The Lord God, he said, And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things. The feast is set at the table. The table is not going around. You come to the table. A feast of wines on the least, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the least, were refined. Some, you have been resisted access to, to the light that will decorate your destiny. He said, will destroy that blindfold on this mountain. And a vase that is spread over all nations. And it will swallow up death in victory. Yeah. Joshua 18, 1. And the land shall be subdued before them. Servitude we end. Slavery we end. Struggling we end. Number two, it shall be a mountain of heaven or not experience. Heaven or not experience living as if the devil no longer exists. Heaven or not, but there shall be no place for him in heaven. Living about the devil on the earth. Come on now. Living a transfigured life in the now. And he was transfigured before them and heaven came down and they saw Moses and Elijah talking with him. Amen. Shiloh 2019 shall be a mountain of world encounters. Diverse encounters. Each one open a new chapter to your life. And the Lord appeared in Shiloh again unto Samuel. For the Lord appeared in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. By the word of the God. Just poof. Here I am. You've been looking for me. Here I am. Number four, a mountain of answered prayers. You heard now somebody who asked for two boys and one girl. What a woman. And she has plenty of eyebrows. And they say you can never be pregnant with this fibroid. The fibroid cleared the way. Two boys, one girl. Goodbye. A mountain of answered prayers. He said, his name shall be called Samuel because I've asked him of the Lord. Number five. Or number four. Oh, five, please. A mountain of answers to what we should do to get out of where we find ourselves. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? That young lawyer asked him in Mark chapter 10, 17 to 23. We serve a question answering Savior. Shall I go up? Will you deliver the things from my hand? Go up. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Shall I go up? The second time he said, no, don't go up. You wait. We serve a question answering God. So every bugging question of your life shall find raw answers at Shiloh. Amen. Let me hear your amen. Are you following? Amen. It's better for me to do this now. We will always be teaching for life. But this one is only 13 days time. And then we try everything to make you wander away. 
You just go to a motor mechanic and sit down with your car. Why your answer is coming down? You are sitting with a car. <laughs> or you are welcoming a guest. He has many subtle ways of getting you robbed. If you are not aware of what is awaiting you, you'll be wandering around those five days. Those five days. You'll be going to the bookstore in the time of the message. The bookstore is not running away. You now stay there small. Then you go to where they sell chin chin. And buy. And I say, what will I do next? So I buy water. You know, it's good to take water uh, normally. I take one bottle of water every two, two hours. I'm not like Papa. Now, you see me sit down here. Nobody has power in this world to come to where I'm sitting. Except I call you, don't try it. I'm before the Lord. I, I am before the Lord. There is no emergency that can get me out of here. When I'm done with here, I can now attend to the next thing. Please, take God serious. Take God serious. Only focused people can make the most of their work with God. Not casual people. Yeah, we are going for prayer. Uh, it's prayer time at Shiloh right now. But I need to watch this thing finish. What are you watching? People thought I was mad. But you see where madness has brought me. People thought he's mad. Leave him alone. He's mad. Doesn't know what he's doing. See where what he doesn't know what he's doing has brought me. There are many, many people today that have no identity. Shiloh 2019 will turn your story around. Some have thought you will never amount to anything in your life. Watch it. They will come bowing down to you. Depending on how you push yourself here. God has no uncle. You don't worship him in spirit, but you are wasting time. A mountain of answered prayers. Number six, a mountain of prophetic interventions. You heard how Eli said to him, the Lord God of Israel, grant the desires of your heart. And God confirmed that intervention. Is a mountain of prophetic intervention. A word will just come that is just your word and God's prophet might be looking just in your direction. And then, whoo! And you knew that's a word for you. And they call prophetic intervention. Amen. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And the prophet was a preserved. As Ezekiel was picking forth the word of the Lord, the dry bones came together. <laughs> and breath came upon them. And there stood in that valley a mighty host unto God. It's a mountain of prophetic interventions. You shall not miss your own. It's a mountain of voices that lead the way to supernatural breakthroughs. A mountain of voices. A month and which voice we had when we were with him on the month. Shiloh is a mountain of voices. How do I mean? Now listen. You know, Jesus is Shiloh personified. In Genesis chapter 49 and talking about the tribe of Judah, uh, Judah. In verse 10, he said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between half his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. How do I know he's talking about Jesus? Verse 11. He said, Binding his fowl unto the vine, and his ass is caught unto the choice vine. Wash his garment in wine and his clothes in the blood of graves. Now we saw the ass and the colt that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Is the is Shiloh personified? 
Every time you come into Shiloh, you are coming to meet with Jesus. The one that holds the answers to all concerns of your life. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady. I will give you rest. Come and learn the way to go, and you shall find rest for your souls. A mountain of voices. It's a mountain of testimonies. Every encounter with Christ culminates in a testimony. He stepped into the boat of Peter in his frustrated state and turned him to a celebrity. Every encounter with Jesus. Zacchaeus said, I must see Jesus. He went and climbed the sycamore tree and Jesus lifted up his eyes right there. He said, come down room. Today, salvation enters your house. Eh? 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 He's going to his house? Every encounter with Jesus culminates in a testimony. That man said, take me down through the roof. It doesn't matter. We'll pay for it later. Your man, your sins are forgiven thee. <laughs> Rise up, my friend, and take your bed. And he arose immediately. Every encounter with Shiloh Every encounter with Jesus, the Shiloh personified man culminates in testimonies. Get ready. Your trials shall be converted to testimony. Your trials shall be converted to testimony. Now, watch. Number nine. Shiloh shall be a mountain of prophetic release of mantles. <laughs> That is, the grace upon God's prophet shall be duplicated into the lives of many. The grace speaking on the life of his prophet shall be duplicated into the lives of many. I will take off the spirit that is upon you and place upon the 70 elders and they shall bear the burden of the people with you. Numbers 11 and beginning from verse 17 all the way. If you see me when I'm caught up, it shall be yours. And the one wind came, Elijah saw it, and returned with the mantle of Elijah, and the people exclaimed, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. That was my experience at the convention in Tulsa when the mantle of again fell on my life. The proof is global today. In the name of Jesus, somebody's mantle will fall this time. Yeah. In Malachi chapter 4 verse 6, And it shall turn the heart of fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That is, grace will be transferring from one generation to another so that curses or curses can be averted. Connect. Shiloh will be the donor of a new day for your life. Amen. Number 10 it shall be a mountain of solutions. Come and say with me, Shiloh shall be a mountain of solutions to all issues of my life. A mountain of solutions to all issues of my life. Come unto me, all you restless, I will give you rest. So we come to him to find rest from all our restless areas in life. Number 11, a mountain of visions and revelations. A mountain of visions and revelations. Thou will show me the path of life, for in thy presence is fullness of joy. On your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. A mountain of visions and revelations. That will be your experience at Shiloh. Yeah. Just stand upon your watch and set yourself upon the tower and want to see what he will say to you. And the Lord will say, write the vision. Make it plain. And wrong with it. 
It's for an appointed time, but at the end, if you won't stop running, he shall speak. Though it tarries, wait for it. It shall surely come to pass. It shall not tarry. Finally, number 12. Shiloh 2019 shall be a mountain of baptism into the realm of breaking limits. It shall be a mountain of baptism into the realm of breaking limits. Many destinies will open up supernaturally. Many who may be struggling today will be taught to pay setters in their field. Many who may have no identity of any color in the name of Jesus will be torn to three blazers in their pursuit. Get ready for it. No one should miss this annual prophetic event for any reason. It shall lead to the opening of new and strange chapters to the life of every participant. Lift up your right hand and connect with this prophetic feast. Connect with it. Connect with this prophetic feast right now. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Can anybody prepare for an exam on behalf of another? But my friend, go and say, I will take care of that. I will read for you, then the money I will embrace you, and then everything I read will just pour into your system. That would be a grand failure. Amen. It will be failure of the century. Not even the wife can prepare for the husband. Not the husband can prepare for the wife. Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee as I have listed, O Israel. And because I will do this, not I may do it, I will do it. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. All of this is what I will do. And because this will I do unto you, prepare to meet thy God. That's what makes the ongoing this month most relevant. Prepare. How do I prepare? Sanctify yourself. Wash your clothes against the third day. Because on the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all these people. Be ready against the first day. Exodus chapter 19, verse 10 to 14. That's what we do, therefore, prepare to meet thy God. I want to know we are in the days of bright clouds towards the outbreak of Shiloh. So every service, including covenant hour of fellowship uh, or prayers, every service is ordained for manifestation of the bright clouds that precede the showers, including next Sunday. Get yourself ready. Be in the Shiloh mood. Let everybody know you are preparing for something, not that you want them to know, but let them see the seriousness of preparation if they care to around your life. If you remove raw encounters with God from my life, it's down to zero. My confidence in God came through diverse encounters. Diverse encounters with heavy focus. Go with decorate your life. Oh. So tell every distraction. I have no business with you. I have an appointment with my maker. He's prepared the table before me. Sit down there. So it's worth shutting down your shop there for five days. 
Because you have been there all these three days, all these days of your year. <laughs> and uh, he's looking at you and looking at it. Go to the one who can make things happen. Settle with him. I, I'm appealing to you because if everybody from outside is catching it, and you are there as uh, a decorative item, it's not fair on your life. It's not fair. And it's your making. It's your making. You know, proximity breeds contempt. What is in Kenan land? I've been in Kenan land. I've been sick all along and I'm seeing Kenan land. Somebody just touched the ground and everything turned loose because of the preparedness of the heart. The truth is, this year will be different in your life. Preparation has no respect for anybody. Unprepared pastors will return empty. Unprepared bishops will return empty. Unprepared founder will return empty. Everybody requires preparation to maximize the manifestations reserved for us at Shiloh 2019. Everybody. Everybody. You are head of usher, head of security, head of uh, traffic. Everybody, as a head of the church, has to prepare. He said, prepare to meet thy God because of what he wants to do for you and in your life. Everybody. No one here will miss his portion. Another man will not take your crown. Another man will not take your crown. Very quickly, among the preparations, we've been looking at... Uh, Understanding pathways to godliness. He said, The way of peace they know not. They have made crooked paths for their feet. Those who walk there and they shall not know peace. Now, you can replace the word peace with righteousness because the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. So the way of righteousness, they know not. They have made crooked paths for their feet. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Whatever you do or you don't do does not matter. You are under grace or not under the law. You can live a lawless life. You see, I just was with the Lord yesterday and he was telling me all this. That there is nothing about sanctification. We are already sanctified by the Spirit of God. Amen. And then all the sinners, all the defied ones, be shouting, Amen. Speak on. Carry on. You are, you are on a highway to a wrong place. <laughs> Don't be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John 3, 7. It's a little children. Let no man... It is only children you can deceive. Oh. You can't deceive matured people who have engaged in a quality walk with God over time. Friends, hell is real. If you believe in heaven, that means you understand and agree that there's hell. Why do you believe in heaven? You don't want to go to hell. Because there are only two places to go. Don't let any fast motivational speaker, they are not ministers. Their job is to gather people together and entertain them. They are out to entertain the people. And the people are well entertained. They, they, there's no Bible in their hand. Though. There is no tablet in their hand. There is no, nothing. Yes, shout. More. Yeah. And then they can be spending money on you like the Yoruba people do when you are singing. They just come out and then put it on your head. Then somebody's collecting it. Is that? Now, can you imagine Jesus for once in your life? While he's preaching, somebody's bringing money on his head. Can, can, can you imagine it? They, they turn the church to a club. So, there is hello. <laughs> and only righteous people will get there. Will get to heaven. There is hell. There is hell. You won't get there. Amen. They have made crooked paths for themselves. They have raised teachers that will speak to their itchy ears. So they won't even know the difference between the truth and lies anymore. But somebody is breaking forth finally, finally. Amen. You will begin to enjoy the reality of a walk with God. Amen. You'll be talking to him, he'll be talking back to you. 
you'll be asking questions, you'll be answering directly. That shall be your experience. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Little children, you have been little children for long. Now grow up. <laughs> Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. And for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest to destroy, not to pamper, to destroy the works of the devil. He that is born of God, say that now, because the seed of God <laughs> remaineth in him. The word of God rules and guides his life. So he walks out of sins and defilement. We must mortify the deeds of the flesh by engaging the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. So the deeds of the flesh can be mortified. To mortify means to destroy to kill. You can kill the deeds of the flesh by engaging the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Now, from Matthew chapter 3, 11 and 12, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But there's one coming after me who's mightier than I. I can't Handle the latchet of his shoes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is, is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor, cleanse it. And he will burn off the chaff with unquenchable fire. Holy Ghost fire, destroy this deed of the flesh in my life. That's how to mortify it. Nerush Kanabala Tetsianura. Holy Ghost, destroy these notions of the flesh in my life. Nino Sekala, Luria, destroy these defied thoughts in my life. Holy Ghost, by your fire, mortify these thoughts, these acts, and these notions. Colossians chapter 3. And verse 5. Mortify therefore your members that are upon the earth. Mortify, kill, destroy. This includes fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And we can only do that through the Spirit. Everybody say through the Spirit. The Spirit has that unquenchable fire ministry for every spiritual child around our lives. Lift up your right hand where you are. Holy Ghost, destroy every deed of the flesh in my thoughts, in my notions. And in my walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Colossians 3, 5 and 6. Let's go back to it. Verse 6 now. For with things sake, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. So, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. So they are supposed to be past tense issues. Past tense issues. And I declare them as past tense issues in everyone's life tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We must keep ourselves from idols. First John 5, 21. 
Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Help me say the last word. Amen. What did he say there? Little children, keep yourself from idols. Why? It has the power to make God turn his back on you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 23. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. It's important to hammer on this. The world is largely ruled today by the gods of gold. I must have it and by all means, righteous or unrighteous or mixed. I just must have it. Now, must. I say must. They say, ah, don't you fear God? No. I say I just must have this. After that, I will fear God. There are two ruling forces recognized in scriptures, not even the devil. You cannot serve two masters. You will have to hold on to one and despise the other, love one and, and love, hate the one and love the other, or you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. God and money. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and possession. You cannot serve God and riches. You will have to love one and hate the other. You will have to embrace one and despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. Now, please listen to me. A number of us have been here in this church for quite some time. There are some who have been here from Kaduna days and are still here in church today. And I confess before the Lord, not one day have we raised prayers for money. That I know. And I should know because everybody met me here. And um, I'm a vegetation. I don't move. you find me here in every service. Praise God. Uh, but why are we not lacking resources? Because we understand the mystery of seeking first the kingdom of God and all other things as are required, as at when they are needed, they shall be supplied. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Otherwise, when we were six, for God's sake, don't you think we needed to pray? Oh God, don't forget that we are here. And we must eat. The church must go on. We must pay rent. Not once, not God is hearing me in heaven now. Please understand where you are and maximize every scriptural experience that you have there. You cannot serve God and mama. When they talk of Christian political leaders, there's nothing wrong with it. We need that. But how many of them will return as Christians? How many are prepared enough? That they won't see something dangling like this and catch it. The moment God sees where your focus is, he will keep lavishing his blessings on your life. You know he knows your thoughts are far off. If he fast forwards your life and he sees how you are misbehaving, under 100 times, say, no, no, no. 100 times is too much for this man. Bring him down to 50 so he can be coming to church. Amen. If your soul and my soul is more precious to God than anything you may have. So, and it does not tempt anybody with evil. You need to get to a point where God can testify you are not living for money. Job said, if I ever kissed my hand 
because my wealth is great. He said, God knows, and he will judge it. So there are no people looking for these things. There are people pursuing after God. If you consider my servant Job, there is not one like him on the earth. Amen. Beware of the God of gold that has destroyed and dug the grave for many. Beware of the God of gold that has landed many in prison and they are there for years on end. Beware of the God of gold. It has never left anybody the same we met him. He said, it's on the law side. And they say, no, we are not on the law side. We are on the gold side. You remember the story in Exodus chapter 32? 3,000 of, of them stood with gold instead of God. It's so clear. It interprets Matthew 6, 24 very clearly. That people would choose gold in the place of God any day, any time. Who is on the law side? Let them come here. We are not on the law side. This gold, we won't leave it. Come here, oh, they say, no, we have chosen gold in the place of God. Let God go his way. And then they took the sword and killed and destroyed them one by one. You will not be destroyed. Yeah. Beware of the God of gold. Beware. Beware of the craze, the craze, the craze, the craze, the craze. People have gone through the desert on their way to Europe. And they have died in their numbers without their parents knowing where they were. Lie. 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 But know that God's contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we're not taking anything out of it. Walk in the covenant. Whatever is due, you will be given you at each phase of your life. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. amen. Bye bye, God of gold. You shall not have a foothold in this ministry. You shall not have a foothold in anyone's life. Amen. Your destiny will be decorated. Amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Your destiny will be decorated. Amen. Your destiny will be decorated. Amen. Your destiny will be decorated. Amen. Every destiny about to crash is recovered tonight. Amen. You know, anything you steal does not add to you. No. It brings a curse that destroys all that you have even had righteously. It will consume all his house with the timber, with the stones. Zechariah chapter 5 verse 4. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the thief. And that's what the God of gold does. Like Achan did. I said I took it and hid it in my tent. Behold it's in my tent now. He said I coveted it and took it. Two Babylonish garments and wedge of gold and I kept them in my house. And that destroyed his entire lineage. You will not see destruction. Amen. Beware of idolatry. Beware of the God of gold. God is more than what you need to have all your needs met. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Yeah. Somebody's going to give you something and he said, We have you been since money. I just went out. You went to church, too, but because the man is not a church man, you can't tell him you went to church. I just went somewhere this morning. Oh, did you go to church? No, 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 no. <laughs> you have chosen gold in the place of God. Wherever that takes you, good luck. I'm just coming from church. Amen. Oh, it was a wonderful service today. Eh. Please, you just need to taste this thing once and know how sweet it is. Life. Life. You can't stand boldly with God. He won't stand with you. May you never say your bad right for a muscle of made. Let's round up. We must abstain from all appearances of evil. My son, when sinners entice you, consent not. If sinners entice you, consent not. He that walks with the wise shall be wise, and a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Abstain from all appearances of evil. First Thessalonians 
chapter 5 and verse 22. Abstain from all appearances of evil. My prayer is that each one of us here will not have to struggle to please God anymore. Yeah. But by engaging all the forces being unveiled to us in the course of this month, each one shall begin to live a triumphant Christian life. Yeah. That shall be your portion. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Yeah. Amen. First, rise to your feet and connect with the teachings of tonight. Connect with it by faith. Mortify every deed of the flesh by engaging the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Mortify. Connect with this by faith. Everybody now pray. Pray and connect with this awesome light by faith. God, I will never serve you. I have found a true God. My soul is more precious than my possessions. I shall not worship a man. I remain a true worshiper of the living God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand. Please get seated for a moment. Now, there are individuals in our service tonight, both here in all of our viewing centers, who need to turn their life over to Jesus and become members of his household. Why he takes responsibility over your life. You are here tonight, you want to be born again, you want your sins to be forgiven, you want to name it in the book of life, you want to live your overcomer's life, you want to make heaven at the end of a most colorful adventure on earth, I'd like to pray with you. Wherever you are tonight, please stand to your feet. You want me to pray with you tonight? <laughs> to be free from the power of sin, to begin to enjoy serving the living God in truth and in deed, please stand to your feet. Wherever you are, God bless you. God bless you. That applies to all of us, both here and at the video of viewing centers. Please stand to your feet and God bless as you do in the name of Jesus. There are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their lives to Christ. If you are standing, remain standing, please. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, wherever you are, please stand to your feet. You are not experiencing the reality of new birth anymore. You want to reconnect back to God, wherever you are, stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. In this awesome revival time that we are in, in this great service tonight, wherever you are, stand to your feet and God bless us to do. God bless us to do. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, please stand in the name of Jesus. Somebody else needs to get up wherever you are, get up on your feet. Jesus will recover you tonight and you will get reconnected back home in Jesus' name. Now, everybody standing for these prayers, please come over here right in front and I'll be praying for you now. In the name of Jesus, keep coming. In case you didn't stand at that time, it's not late, you can stand and join us now. Come quickly, come quickly. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. Please come, please come. It's your turn for a turn around, come. It's your turn for a new dawn, come. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, come. You want to have a brand new beginning, come. Please come. Please come.
Somebody else is joining us. Join us quickly right now. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. It will be your greatest decision ever. In the name of Jesus. Please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God. That applies to all the various viewing centers. Please bow your heads as we pray. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I open my heart to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has found them. Your grace has saved them. Let the same grace preserve them. Your grace has found them. Your grace has restored them. Let the same grace preserve them. Grace to run this race to the end is imparted upon your life today. You shall not fail nor fall down the way. You will make it through to the end. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. A new day dawns on your life today. And I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. No arrow of the wicked shall locate you anymore. You have come in. You will stay in for life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please give the Lord a big hand for them. Please walk this way along with the church officials. And then you submit your sleep and get back to your seat. Set yourself for a word in season that brings the answer to your questions. Shiloh is ordained a mountain of voices from heaven, giving direction and silencing the enemy.